Okay, hi there and welcome to a macro video looking at one of those tricky little topics, the propensity to consume and save. So the short revision video, we'll take a look at these two concepts. Uh, they're linked strongly to understanding the economic cycle and in particular what happens to aggregate demand when people change their spending and saving behaviour. So what is the propensity to consume? Well, that's the word which means what happens to our spending our total spending on goods and services when there's a change in our disposable income, income after tax and benefits. So two concepts here, the marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save. So the MPC is the change in our spending following a change in our disposable income. In other words, the extra uh, bit of, in, of any additional income that is spent rather than saved. Our income might go up, for example, by £100 a week and we choose to spend £80 of it. That would give a marginal propensity of 80 over 100 or 0.8. Now, disposable income can be spent or saved. Therefore, saving, S for short, is disposable income, Y, minus consumption. And therefore, the marginal propensity to save is simply the change in saving brought about again by a change in disposable income. I think this is best looked at by working through a, a numerical example. Here's a four levels of disposable income and some data on how much money people are spending in pounds and obviously what's left is saving. So the two, column two and column three should add up to the column on the left, income. Well, what about the first change? When income goes up from 5,000 to 10,000, people are spending £4,500 of that increase. They're spending 90% of any increase in income there. So therefore the marginal propensity to consume is 0.9 and the NPS must be 0.1. Those two figures, by the way, must always add up to one because disposable income can be spent or saved. Let's uh, increase income to £15,000 from 10000 Notice what's happened to spending. It's gone up this time by 4000 so with this time we're spending 80% or 0.8 of any extra income. Savings have risen by 1,000. 1,000 over 5 is a 20% uh, marginal propensity to save. And again, those two figures add up to 1. So we're spending more, but actually in relative terms we're only spending 80% of a change in income, not 90%. What about the next change in income? Income rises again by £5,000 to £20,000. Yes. We're spending more. We're spending £3,000 of that extra, which is a marginal propensity to consume of 0.6. Therefore, we must be saving 40% of that change in income. So the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to save must always equal 1. Another related concept important to grasp is the concept of the average propensity to consume and save. And the APC is simply total consumer spending consumption divided by disposable income. Likewise, the average propensity to save, also known as the savings ratio, is total saving divided by disposable income. And again, income can be spent or saved. Therefore, the, the figure, the coefficient for APC and APS must always equal one. Let's head back to our data on income uh, and look here. So for example, at 10,000 pounds of income, we're spending 90%, APC is 0.9, and we're saving 10%, APS is 0.1. Uh, when income rises to 15,000 pounds, we're spending just under 90%, 87% of our income, and we're saving 13%. And when income rises to 20,000 pounds, we're spending 80% of our income, APC is 0.8, and of course we're saving 20% of our income. Quite important to think about the relationship between the average and the marginal propensity to consume. Let's finish with that in this video. So if somebody's marginal propensity to consume is lower than the previous average, uh, that means the average will fall. But if the marginal propensity to consume is higher than the previous average, then the average will go up. It depends on what people choose to do with their extra income. On the other hand, of course, it could be equal, even Stevens, if the, if the marginal propensity to consume is the same as the average, then the average will stay constant. 
let's just show this using a bit of data. Let's just choose three levels of income here. Uh, so income is 10,000 with average propensity consumers 0.9. That next 5,000 pounds of income, can you see that from 10,000 to 15,000? That increases spending by 4,000. The marginal propensity consumers 0.8. It's lower than the previous average, so that drags the average down to 0.87. And again, for that next little lump of extra income, £5,000, people are spending 60% of that change in income. The NPC is 0.6. Can you see that brings down the average a little further, down to 0.8. The marginal is less than the average. The average goes down. Little exam hint. To finish with, oftentimes students state in exam scripts that the MPC, the marginal propensity to consume, is the proportion of income that is spent. That's a common mistake. It's incorrect. That would actually be a description of the average propensity to consume. So check your notes on this. It's important to make a distinction between these two concepts. Okay, thank you.